today we are going to build out a couple of slides uh, to express our understanding of the human situation of the human dynamics within Tinkleman and of course you can then extrapolate it to your current client the client that you're working with so there are two ways that uh, we can think in terms of understanding our stakeholders one is at a broader general uh, kind of map of our different stakeholders and the next is a more focused on a specific stakeholder or a specific team of people uh, within the organization this grid helps us classify or categorize the different stakeholders based on the kind of value or the impact or the influence that they have on a, on our project with them so here you can see there are four quadru quadrants into which you can place a person or a team uh, and that would help you to understand how you will respond to them how you will engage with them or not engage with them depending on where they are in this quadrant um, and another thing that this helps us to also do is identify the forces the human forces that need to be balanced or traded off as you go about your work so for example while you have someone with high interest and high power you also have to keep someone with low interest and high power in mind you can't just put all your focus on the high interest high power because you don't know if you don't put or if you don't give any uh, you know attention to the one in high power but with low interest he may one day turn out to be the person or the group or the team that can actually impact negatively the work that you do so you've got to balance off a trade off the the time the people in this in, that you identify or specify in this quadrant this is getting into the psyche of a specific stakeholder or a user of your system you don't build it for everyone you have to pick and choose who you're going to build this for the ones that have influence maybe or the ones that are resisting the most or the ones that you know will champion the system uh, so you've got to kind of figure out who you want to do it for the intent is to understand what motivates them what they want what resistance will we need to work through essentially to get them aligned to the org vision for the project um, and basically just use this understanding to get a sense of the system the organization at large so let's get a lay of a land from the Tinkleman perspective. So you can see that venture capital investors, that's the organization or the group of people who actually invested in Tinkleman. And they have low interest in terms of the day-to-day -day working, uh, but they have high power because they can make decisions regarding the direction Tinkleman takes or what it does or doesn't do. And so we've got to make sure that they are basically protected because that's their money uh, and of course also satisfied in the kind of uh, projects or movements or directions that Tinkleman takes the next is the high interest and high power and let's just talk about two of them um, one is Elise Mor Mor Morrison she's obviously very angry with the way IT is working or has been able to enable her or not enable her and so she has high power because she's also um, leading the business and driving the sales at the baristas and uh, so you have both an angry and a very interested and powerful person in 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 deploying in terms of deploying it and uh, deploying our technology and so we've got to really really pay attention to her really try and satisfy her really make sure that she gets what she wants because she is moving the business forward the same with abigail smith she too is from a sales perspective and moving the the, the sales of coffee um, uh, coffee uh, powders and coffee uh, uh, 
pouches forward and so we need to make sure that she's uh, got all the support she's got our attention and got all the support she needs the CFO is of course the guy holding the money strings and so we need to be very cognizant in fact I would have probably I, I keep kind of you know I'm conflicted between keeping the CFO uh, almost at the same level as the CEO and the reason I say that is because I know the CEO is is the innovator and he's already sold on technology and so while we have to pay attention to him we all my take would be to pay attention to the guys who are a bit not too happy with the way things are going and the CFO definitely is one of them um, as to why I would put the CIO a bit below um, no, no real reason I mean he's there and he's in obviously someone with high interest and power and so we've got to keep him satisfied and he's got lots of challenges and so we need to ensure that you know we kind of address some of his fundamental problems because finally I he in some senses and not in some senses actually answerable to um, the CEO and to the board etc the CFO also then the people who we have to monitor and keep informed uh, the ones with high interest because they are the ones who are actually going to use our systems most likely are the shop managers, the marketing people, the baristas and the customers. And you're, it's not that they really have low influence, they have a low direct influence but they have a pretty high influence as far as the movement or the, or the directions the technology solutions will take. And of course, they have high interest. So we are, since we are building it for them. Uh, finally, it's the low interest and low influence folks. And here you can see uh, the package bean owner because I think by and large this is a new org or it's 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 already growing. Uh, and so you kind of say, okay, you're low on priority because right now my first focus is Elise and um, Abigail. And of course, then the CEO, etc. And so, in some sense, you're kind of pushing him down a little because you're not probably not going to focus on him right now. Uh, finance and procurement always, but remember, you've got the CFO covered, so you know finance would probably follow what the CFO says. And uh, as far as procurement is concerned, remember they're they're important, but they're the ones who are basically signing off on what is asked for by the people in power which in this case would be let's say an Elise or an Abigail and then you have customer focus groups again from them we actually learn about what we need to do or not do but they don't directly say okay I need this or they don't really direct the the, the direction that we take with the solution so here you can see we have a lay of the land kind of thing we have an understanding of who we want to put our attention on who we want to put most of our attention on who we want to reduce or put a little less attention on and so on and so forth. Now, just one thought there, uh, people who are you're not giving too much attention to, don't forget that they may in turn, maybe in a quarter quarter's time, may actually become people with higher power or with higher interests. So don't completely neglect them, keep them in your mind, but you don't, like for example, if I would meet Alice once a week, I would probably meet, let's say, uh, Curtis, the package bean owner, once a month or something. So it's it's kind of you know balancing out, trading off the attention you're giving amongst the different influences within this quadrant that you have. So here, what we you notice is that we've honed in on, focused on, gone deep into. A specific type of people not necessarily one person so basically what we would have done was we would have talked to a number of line staff and then you know pooled some of the things that we've heard and which is common amongst all of them and from here what you get as a perspective one fundamental perspective is that these guys are the ones in front of the customer and they need to be friendly they, they are the ones who are going to make or break in some sense you know the the, the response from customers they're going to in, and they are also actually going to make or break the organization in some sense because they are the ones who are the face of the organization and so as you as you kind of look at this canvas what you can see is how, how the question you may want to ask yourself is 
how do I enable these people to focus on being friendly and take away the drudgery, the tasks that they may have to do, uh, the, the more you know, coffee-based or the delivery tasks so that they can fundamentally focus on engaging the customer, on making him feel comfortable, etc., etc. And so when you look at this or you read what they've said, that's what you need to be thinking. That's where your opportunity for intervention from a technology perspective lies. In enabling these people to keep their attention on the customer, it's almost as if keep their attention on the customer and everything else that they need to do for the customer in terms of giving him coffee or taking his order all happens almost automatically in the background while they are having this great chat with the customer, making him feel, you know, looked after and so on and so forth. So as I said before, for people like us or for most technologists, pe managing people, empathizing with them, listening to them from a certain perspective, which is theirs and not ours, and, uh, you know, being able to really get into their shoes is not really so easy for us. But there are ways when with, with practice you can get there. And well, technically speaking, since the customer is king at some, you know, which is a cliche, then it's, it really is imperative for us to ensure that we understand him so we can actually deliver value and we can actually deliver what he wants through which he can create value for the organization. Thank you.